Bob and Brad, the two most famous physical therapists on the internet. Hi folks, I'm Bob Schrupp, physical therapist. Brad Hynek, physical therapist. Together we are the most famous physical therapists on the internet. In our opinion, of course, Bob. This video today was put together by Mike and Alex of the Bob and Brad crew. Mm -hmm. Both are physical therapist assistants and both have been providing treatments to our patients for years. They do... Fantastic work. Fantastic yeah, work. We're very happy with all the work with their patients. We have reviewed and approved all of their material that they're bringing up. Uh, so they're showing you our treatment through them with their experience, and it's been a, exactly. a wonderful. So make sure you subscribe to the Bob and Brad Crew channel, in which they do reviews of products that keep you healthy, fit, and pain-free. They handle all of our new products now. Enjoy the video. Good luck. Welcome, folks, to the Total Knee Replacement Fitness Program. I'm Alex, physical therapist assistant. I'm Mike, physical therapist assistant. And this is after surgery equipment suggestions. So we're getting away from fitness for just this one video, but this is important, isn't it, Mike? Yes, these are things that you will probably need and use almost all of them at one point during your recovery. Yep, but take note, every person has different needs. Some will require some of this equipment, and others will not, you know. Yeah, so we got 12 different products here to talk about. Pick which ones you think you need, or your hospital or doctor will probably give you a good chunk of these. So. Yep, that is accurate. I will start, if you don't mind. I, fine. I'm going to start with a very, very important one early on for your pain, your inflammation, and your swelling. And this is a cold pack. It says a ice and hot pack, but you mm. won't need the heat too much. So no. this is a cold pack. Obviously, you're going to need to get that pain down to progress. So... I don't think I need to say anything else. Yeah, or your surgeon also sometimes will give you a cooler pack with continuously cold ice coming through too. Those are very handy as yes, well. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. Uh, number two, we have a wedge. Or if you do not want to buy a foam wedge like this, you can just use extra pillows. It's meant to prop your legs up when you're laying down. And then you can even throw an ice pack on top of it. So it just kind of gets your legs some bending while mm -hmm. you're laying in bed or relax it a bit. Yep. And the key is to get your legs above your heart so that fluid flows through your heart. And then you ultimately pee it out. Give yes, a little eventually. All right. Um, a walker, a crutch, or a cane. Now, this is going to depend on your functional level after surgery, but... A lot of people start with a walker. You're going to want a height adjustable walker, something that fits you. They come pretty standard size. You're going to put a lot of weight through this thing while you have a painful leg. So, I mean. And this is a front wheel walker. There's two wheels on the front. Most people do better with that than a standard walker, Yeah. I would say. But, yeah, we've seen people with canes right away. It's not as common, yeah. but. Almost all of them have walkers. Your surgeon will probably tell you what you should be using right away. Yes, so. and how long you should probably use it yep. for. So. so a walker, cane crutch. Number four is a toilet riser for commode. I'll put a picture up of one here. So basically these go over your toilet. Uh, they typically have handlebars, and it makes it that much easier to get on and off your toilet because after a knee replacement, it hurts to bend down that far. Some people can't mm. even bend that far. What you're probably going to want to do is actually kick your bent leg out your bad leg out as you go down. Yep. So That's going to be an important one. Yeah, they are very important. Yep. All right. Number five, a leg lifter. You're going to need this for, you know, I'd say at least a week maybe. Some people won't need it at all, those people that want to progress real fast. But all you do is you hook it around your forefoot here, and then you lift your leg where it needs to go, specifically in and out of bed. Yeah, that's the biggest time I've seen them used. You know, in and out of chairs, obviously not, but yep. bed, it's a big one, especially when your knee hurts right away. Yep. Number six is a tub transfer chair. So this is to get in and out of the shower. You put it half in the tub and half out. That way, if you're not steady getting in, you can kind of sit your butt on it, lift your legs over the tub, and yep. get to where you want in the shower. Um, some people, after a while, if they can get in the shower, okay, they just leave it in the shower itself so they could sit down while they're actually showering. Yep. So, and they're plastic and they can handle water, so you don't have to worry about it rusting and corroding on you. Yep. So, and th this one kind of leads into my next one. Mike talks about sitting down in the shower, which is important. You don't want to fall. It might be a good idea to have number seven grab bars in the shower as well. Yes. Or you know, outside by the toilet or to get in the house, you might need a grab bar. Where else? 
Even by the bed, if you have trouble getting sure. up, if you're a person that just has issues. But they're very handy. Uh, we'll just put a picture of, you know, basic one up. I think most people know what grab bars yep, are. Yep, just make sure they're installed correctly. Yep. Number eight is handrails on steps. Obviously, if you have one staircase in your house or if you have a ramp, um, try to have railings on it. It's going to be a lot easier to get up right now. They're going to teach you um, in the hospital how to correctly do stairs after a knee replacement for a while. Mm -hmm. Um, you're going to need that little bit of extra support to get up. If you do have a wide step, there is a way to do it with a walker they might teach you. But if you know you haven't had your surgery yet and you don't have any handrails and you have stairs, I would get some handrails mm -hmm. put in. They're very important. I would agree with that. That's for sure. Number nine, a reacher. If you drop something, you're not going to be able to bend those knees for a while to pick it back up. If you drop your $100 bill, you ain't <laughs> going to pick it up. Somebody else will. I'll pick it up. So you reach, reach I'll it give down. I'll give it back to them. Easy enough, pick it up. Most people know what a reacher is. Reacher. Hey, you just throw a hundred dollar bill around like that? Yeah. Oh, Pocket man. change. I guess. Small potatoes. <laughs> potatoes? I thought talk about money. <laughs> Number ten is a sock aid and a shoehorn. Ah. Uh, these make it so you don't have to bend down to put on your shoes or take your shoes off or your socks as well. You just slide your sock on. Uh, your OT specialist in the hospital or skilled nursing facility will teach you how to use these. They're a little tricky. And you probably have longer socks right now from your doctors sure. too. So or Google or YouTube it. That's you. It yep. never fails. But these two come in very handy, both very cheap items too if your insurance won't cover it. Mm -hmm. Next, this is, these are near and dear to our heart. Number 11, the knee glide and the stool. These are very important for rehabilitation the two most important on the list. Can we disagree? Do you like keep these by your bedside? I if do. They're near <laughs> I can't believe I let heart. it on the ground. I usually cuddle it. <laughs> All right. The knee glide, I'm just going to demonstrate here. I don't have to get into it too much, but this is to get your knee back to bending appropriately. Yep. If you can't afford one of these, um, you can just put a towel on the wood floor mm -hmm. or go on carpeted floor with socks as well. This just makes it easier and gets the little incline or decline, yep. and they're made by Fab and Brad. Yes, and you can't go wrong with those two. You can't? Well, certain aspects of Okay. It. All right, and then a stool, you know. Any stool you have. Some people even flip a small wastebasket upside down. Whatever works for you. Yeah, another chair if you can get it up that high, but it might be too high early on. Yep. Typically something a little bit lower is going to be optimal. Yep, less um, than a foot probably to start if you're in a standard chair. Yeah, so. and they can buy little cheap plastic stools for like 10, mm -hmm. 15 bucks nowadays. So just having one of those that's easy to move, keep by your favorite chair you sit in and stretch it out throughout the day makes it a lot easier. Yep, there you go. Number 12 is going to be ACE wraps or some type of compression sock. Um, your doctor and surgeon is going to give you some right away after surgery. Uh, they will teach you how to roll them up and put them on. There is a technique to it, and they'll kind of show you. Uh, as your leg swelling goes down, you won't have to wear them as often. And just to FYI, if you're standing a lot, they eventually kind of slide down your leg. They're mm -hmm. kind of yeah. a pain in the butt. But if you learn how to do it, put them on. Um, it's a lot easier to keep rewrapping them throughout the day. That's number 12. That's your surgeon's call. So he's going to tell you what you should or shouldn't wear yep. for compression. All right, there you have it. 12 equipment suggestions. Again, yes. you don't need to have them all, but you're going to want a few of these, I can almost guarantee. Make sure to check out the program on bobandbrad.com slash programs. You can find other programs on there, too, with Bob and Brad on them. And check out which video relates to you in our program. Yep. Thank you.